Hey everybody, it's Nathan Hamilton back here at Days of the Dead, and we are sitting here talking with Mr. John Dugan. How are you doing? Hey Lou, I'm fine, I'm fine. How are you guys? Uh, doing good. You enjoying the concert far? Oh yeah, I always do. Very good. Now, um, you're best known, of course, as Grandpa from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. No, I'm actually best known, <laughs> yeah, I'm... <laughs> I was going to go into the whole thing about the first lead role I had in a high school play or something, but no, I'm, I'm, I'm best known for Grandpa. Yeah. <laughs> now, how did you actually end up getting involved in that project? Did you I know the filmmaker? The really long version, or the short version, is my brother-in-law wrote it. There you go. That makes and, sense. Uh, I, you know, he was a writer, lived in Texas. I was an actor, lived in Chicago, and he called me up and said, I got something I want you to do. So there you go. It worked out. So it was like pure nepotism. Now, in the flick, we didn't get really a lot of backstory on who Grandpa was. Did you flesh that character out in your mind, or were you just playing it in the moment? Now, all I, you know, all I really had in my head was he was, he had been like the head killer at a mm-hmm. slaughterhouse in the old days when they used a hammer before they used a slug gun and all that stuff. And that's really all I thought about, and, you know, what it must be like to, to kill hundreds of animals a day by hand you know what what kind of person that would turn you into essentially it's it's not easy playing a role that has no words Mm -hmm. or no voice no sound to you know it's all physical so it's all makeup and and just (laughs) this you know whatever you are so now, Marilyn Burns said on a, uh, in an interview that they actually cut her finger during that scene. So were you actually <laughs> sucking her blood? Yeah, but see, I didn't even know that until just a few years ago. Actually, it might have been last year here that I found out at a Q&A <laughs> that came up, and I was like, what? <laughs> hey, you mean, yeah, we just never wanted to tell you. I was like, son of a bitch. <laughs> you know? And now it would be like assault by bodily fluids or right. something. You know, it'd be against the law to yeah. do that. <laughs> Shove somebody's bloody <laughs> finger in your mouth. But now we've heard all the stories about how intense and you know arduous filming that dinner scene that was. was how much worse was it for you and all those prosthetics? It was as bad. Actually, it was so bad for everybody. I don't think anybody was any. <laughs> Obviously, nobody was any less comfortable than I was. But I don't think anybody was any. We had reached the point there where we were almost 30 hours in on a very, 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 very hot, uncomfortable set and uh, really nasty conditions. So we probably all peaked out. We were probably all about (laughs) at the same level of discomfort. I probably reached my peak way earlier than they did. By the time we were done, we were all fucking miserable, you know. I just probably was miserable maybe 10 hours before they were all Right. Miserable. But you can only get so miserable. Does that make any fucking sense? Yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> At some point, you just plateau. Yeah, with it's it. like everybody's flatland. Yeah, that's it. Can't get no worse. This sucks. Let's just kill her and there. go home. Yeah, right. <laughs> now, just uh, fucking kill her. When y'all were filming that scene, did you know like just how intense it was going to come no, across? No, absolutely on film? not. No, 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 no. You know, t- Toby, you know, had a vision. Kim Hankel had a vision. They were a great team. Uh, Kim and Toby, because. It, with Kim's writing, his offbeat, weird fucking offbeat. Have you ever met Kim? Have you ever met Kim Henkel? No, I've <laughs> Boy, he's, sorry, Kim, but it's the truth. Uh, he's he's he has a twist to him. He's he's, there, he's just eh, just a little off center, you know. And Toby's visual, and and they were such a, a great team, to you know, and it shows in the film. With Kim's writing and, and Toby's uh, visual, his vision of the visual is that is that's redundant, isn't it? But and then and then with uh, uh, Danny Pearl's uh, ability to to understand what Toby was looking for and that and to put it there on film, it was just magic. You know, it was one of those things. We were all in the right place at the right time. You know, you had a talented group of young actors. You had dedicated filmmakers, right. educated, dedicated who all were willing to work for next to nothing for one summer, and we made uh, magic. After I'm that, very proud of it. I'm very, very proud of it. After that, play, aside from the cameo in Next Generation, you were absent from film for quite some time. Yeah. And, well, where were you? What were you doing in that time period? Raising a... Being married, raising a family, making a living, you know? You Waiting go. tables, cooking, tending bar. I spent years, as many actors do, in the food and beverage industry. Mm-hmm. Uh... I've done everything there is to do in a restaurant, yeah. from washing dishes to running the place, you know, so. I recently kind of participated almost in Texas Chainsaw Reunion, making Butcher Boys. 
Was that um, was was a lot of people from the, that movie? Uh, was it kind of pitched as a Texas Chainsaw uh, no, tribute type of thing, or was it just no, on its own? No, no, no. no. no it, was, it was a story that Kim wrote based on based on an essay by. Uh, ah. Shit. Oh, modest proposal. Yes. Yeah, I don't remember the by, name. By uh, 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 Swift. Was it Jonathan yes. Swift? Yeah. I really should know that. <laughs> well, I should have too. I'm right. so sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, cool. it was Jonathan Swift, wasn't it? Yeah. Did he write like Gulliver's Travels or some shit? I, I really couldn't tell you that one. Never read that one. <laughs> My, it's a high school English teacher who killed me no, for I'm, sitting I'm, here I'm not totally playing all this. I have an excuse because I'm 61 years old. How old are you, young man? I'm 34. <laughs> shit. You're supposed to remember all this stuff. I'm hungover as shit if that makes any difference. Hungover. I'm 61. I don't get hungover. You know how much I had go. to drink yesterday? <laughs> um, the, the secret is not to stop. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I've been drinking since Thursday afternoon. So yeah. um, when you reprise the role of Grandpa in Texas Chainsaw 3D, uh-huh. with the um, advances in makeup and everything, how much easier were the oh prosthetics to wear this time around? They use it's silicone. And it's super, super thin. Mm-hmm. And they, they sort of... They put some sort of a, it's not adhesive, it's actually some sort of a solvent that makes the silicone itself kind of gummy, and they just like lay it under your, yeah. and, it, and, they, and it, they go inch by inch by inch, and it's attached completely everywhere. And plus they like hose you down with some sort of like antiperspirant so your face doesn't sweat. Because mm-hmm. most of the discomfort from being in that kind of makeup, a good deal of it comes from sweating underneath it, and you yeah. can't fucking... Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, to answer your questions, way, way better than old. Because uh, in the first one, it was liquid latex attached with uh, spirit gum. It was really, really horrifically uncomfortable. Now, you've been kind of a longtime fixture on the con scene. You've been ten doing years. it for a while. In those 10 years, how has the con scene changed? There's a lot more of them. Right. Politics are getting. <laughs> <laughs> yes, agreed. It's got a wee bit political. Mm-hmm. There's uh, territorial disputes. There's um, shit like that I, that I rather hadn't happened, but it's inevitable. It's, it's, right. it's going to happen. You know, I wish we could all just get along. I agree wholeheartedly. I'd like to have the freedom to do any show I want to anywhere, anytime. You know, yeah. without somebody saying, "Well, you, I don't want you to do my show because you did a show in fucking bumfuck Idaho." You know, two years ago, and you know, some guy uh, like beat me out of quarterback on the football team that I was in high school. Runs that show, I get. <laughs> you know, I'll just leave it there. Now, at one at one point after you know the movie you come out, did you discover the rabid fan base Texas Chainsaw Massacre had? Uh, it really, in the beginning, it didn't have a rabid fan base. I mean, if they were, they were very quiet. Uh, and it was out of release for seven years while it was all hung up in litigation and all that stuff because somehow all the money disappeared. <laughs> it made millions and millions of dollars and nobody knew where it went. Where did the money go? I've heard theories. Oh! <laughs> and it's not the only film that I have it to. But where's the fucking money? But um, so it was like taken out of distribution for seven years while it was, you know. Mm-hmm. And then when it was re released, I guess, in like. Yeah, early 80s or something. Would that, does that sound right? Late 70s, early 80s, yeah. something. Uh, is when it really, I started getting, as far as I can remember, is when it, I really started realizing there was a momentum to it. And people started discovering about the uh, video. Okay, I, for an example, I, you know, I moved to L.A. in 76. So two years after the release. Right. Now, actually, I moved there January of 77. Okay. And, uh, I, of course, it was on my resume, and I started trying to get film work. And I go on to see a casting director, an agent, or whatever. They look at my resume and go, <laughs> You were in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre? <laughs> it was like just a joke to them. Mm-hmm. Whereas 10 years later, it was like, Son of a bitch, you were in the Texas right. Chainsaw Massacre? It had changed that much, right. you know? So. And we were recently on a podcast together, and you mentioned an upcoming flick called The Mangled. The Mangled. I'm what can you tell us about, about that? Very excited about it. Lawrence Nelson, the 12th or something. He's got, like, Roman numerals behind his name. Sorry, sorry Lawrence. It's just, like, hash marks. Are second, third, fourth. Immediately makes you look important that way. 
Well, there's no V, so it must be, okay. a, it's probably the third or something. Lawrence, sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but he's a marvelous writer, filmmaker from, Jesus Christ, I don't know where he's from. He's in Canada right now because his wife's Canadian. So. <laughs> but, you know, in this day and age, we communicate by, either by phone or by, you know, internet or whatever. So, but, uh, m- just marvelous guy. Very intuitive, very sensitive guy, and he's a huge horror nut, and he's written this marvelous film, The Mangled, and I can't tell you, I can't tell you a lot about it, right. sorry. All right. Except that uh, casting-wise, we have a, what would be considered a cast of thousands in the horror world. Okay. It's got fucking everybody in it. Nice. Everybody. And I'm not going to start saying who's in it. Google it, because I'll forget somebody and I'll get pissed off. So I'm just going to say, <laughs> Google it. Yeah, I Google the son of a bitch, because it's got everybody. everybody in it. There's several people here uh, today that are going to be in, in that film. And I'm really, really excited to do it. I like the role a lot. I'm finally getting... Uh, if I'm digressing, just tell me to shut up. But <laughs> do whatever you want, man. <laughs> but well, Stacy's over here. It's an everyday thing. He 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 talks backwards. Uh, see, I'm doing it now. I'm not, I'm really backing up now. This is my girlfriend, Stacy. Isn't she pretty? Um, <laughs> now she's blushing. Um, back in theater school, I had a, a teacher, uh, John Medici, and he was actually filling in for my acting teacher who was on sabbatical like in fucking Russia or some shit she was obnoxious and irritating anyway so I was glad to have this other guy who was a New York actor come in and John told me and I was doing some play I don't know what it was and uh, it was uh, like faculty night. it was like the, the first pre- preview was when all the uh, the faculty would come to see the show and then you were encouraged to chase them down and, and get pickups from them what did you think of the show last night right. You can, give me some notes, you know, what can I do? And uh, he'd been dodging me for like two days, and I finally cornered him. John, John, what do you think, what do you think, what do you think? And he said, and I was 20. Mm-hmm. It was the year I did Chainsaw. Okay. And uh, I said, what do you think, what do you think of the play the night before last? And he goes, okay, let me, I'm going to tell you something, Duke, I'm going to tell you one time. He said, you're a character actor. You'll always be a character actor. And character actors don't get yeah. any work until they're at least 45 yes. years old and get some lines <laughs> in their face. But you're a 20-year-old actor. I mean, it was, like, devastating. I was like, what? <laughs> but, you know, in retrospect, and I, I don't know if John's still alive or anything, <laughs> but he was absolutely right. You know, that's... It's proving to be that that is what, you know, that's what I've fallen into. And, that, and, it, and it, so it didn't matter that I took 20 years off because that wouldn't have worked anyway. You know? Uh, I'd like to thank you very much for talking to me. And uh, stay here at the Sun of Celluloid Show for more interviews from Days of the Dead.